can't believe it, but he's here live in the flesh. Darian Durant, the Rough Riders legendary quarterback. Man, you were getting mobbed at Casino Regina. You coming to your people want autographs right away. Does it ever get old? Or are you excited to come back? It doesn't, especially when you've been away for a while. Just coming back and feeling the love and being back in this environment, uh, you know, it brings back so many memories. So it, it doesn't get old, especially when you've been gone. Uh, it's always fun to be back. You guys had a great event last night at Casino Regina, dinner with doubles. I heard people were paying like a crazy amount of money to sit with you. Can you believe that? Yeah. When I first uh, initially walked in the door, I couldn't believe the atmosphere. I thought I was walking into a small room, you know, maybe 10, 12 tables. But when I got in there and saw the magnitude of the event, I couldn't believe it. So I just want to thank everyone for coming out, showing their support. We had an amazing time. I want to thank my former teammates for, for coming out. And the, the night really wouldn't have been possible without them because I don't have a funny bone in my body. And uh, <laughs> yeah, for, really? you know, to have Schultz and Cates and McCullough and Getty and those guys and Husey and those guys come out, uh, you know, they, they really made the night what it was. I finished my sentence. That was the first time that you saw Wes Cates since? Wow. Yeah. Maybe it's been five, six, six years at least. Yeah. yeah. So it's we, been a while. We've talked since then, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we haven't seen each other in a, in a minute. Yeah. yeah Is yeah, it yeah. like the old cliche you just pick back up? Absolutely. You know what, man? A lot of people don't know, but I used to go, you know, we were done at 130. And so I would go hang out at Wes's house all the time. You know, we would play the game. We would just kick it. He was like, we were really, really tight. And uh, I hate that, you know, everything ended with him so abruptly here, but we were really tight while we played together. He doesn't like that either. He's got a little bit of beef to deal with. <laughs> Brendan Tame is going to be live with us later <laughs> yeah, in September yeah. to talk about that. Yeah. But you guys together <laughs> were undefeated in Labor Day Classics. Man, how is yeah. that possible? That's amazing. It's, it's, it's a tough environment for anybody to come into, honestly. I mean, this, this game – the magnitude of this game and the way the fans support this game. I mean, the team has no choice but to be amped for it. So it's hard to, it doesn't matter our record. I can even remember uh, in 2011 when I don't think we won a game at this point. Yeah, we and were then, struggling. Yeah, and then we came out for Labor Day. And, but and Coach just, Miller had just come back. To yeah, the yeah, so we had kicked uh, Greg. Greg Marshall yes, to the curb. Yes. <laughs> Sorry so about that. That was a rough year, but, uh, <laughs> but it didn't matter because Labor Day – you can just the atmosphere just changes your attitude changes and you can throw all records out the window so i was bragging that we we won all of them when i was on the squad but did we did you win all of them i didn't man actually my only loss was with chris jones so uh you know i don't know what to say about that. Let that, speak like, for that makes itself. sense yeah. no, no. <laughs> what about you guys and your favorite memories from a Labor Day classic or classics. Do you guys have any together before the game, during the game, after the game that stick out? I think what sticks out the most is just the atmosphere. I don't have a single Labor Day classic game that sticks out. I think what sticks out more than the classic is the Banjo Bowl. You know, being able to go over there, because it's so hard to win and back-to-back, -back, especially, you know, going to Winnipeg to play. But uh, I have, you know, great uh, Banjo Bowl memories because we had a lot of success in that those games. Yeah, the ban the one the Banjo Bowl that I remember, I'll make it quick, I missed the flight out. But I flew in. I got to sleep what? in. Wait, wait, wait. You're burying the lead there. Yeah, Why'd I Why'd you miss the flight? I set the clock wrong. Classic. <laughs> so, anyway, set the – Set the clock wrong, missed the flight, got to sleep in because we used to fly to Calgary, then to Winnipeg. It was yep. a terrible flight. Yep. Get in, next day end up scoring three touchdowns. I think we beat Ooh. Winnipeg like almost 40 to six. six or, or seven, I don't know. Yeah. It was bad. It was, it was a bad day for them. But uh, Kid Miller, to tell the story, we, I'm, I'm in, the, in the bathroom of all places, in the, in the locker room, and Miller's like, uh, should I find you for missing the flight? I was like, I don't <laughs> see why you should. He was like. All right, fair enough. But yep. <laughs> that was the end of that. But, yeah. How did you memory. actually get there, though? You missed the team flight. I booked my own flight, went back to sleep, and, and got on the 11 o'clock. We were on, like, the first – we were on, like, a 5.45 flight. We were at the yeah, – supposed yeah. to be at the And we had the early. worst travel plans yeah, yeah, coming yeah. from Regina. Come, yeah, Regina I mean, Regina to go west, rough. to go back east, we used to have to do that. Even if we were going to Toronto or Montreal, we would have to go west first. It was horrible. So the players can't complain these days, man. They got no, the fancy no, charters. No. They're living the life now. <laughs> All right. The rival Winnipeg Blue Bombers are in town. And some fans might remember, Darian, that you actually signed with Winnipeg, right? And it seemed like there was a chance that you were going to suit up for the Blue Bombers, which 
seems crazy to even think of. But from your perspective, clear the air a little bit. What went down there? Well, I, I definitely was was interested and uh, had every intention to go to Winnipeg and play. Um, you know, I can remember a conversation I had with a coach, and I won't say his name mm -hmm. because I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. But I just had my first child. And, um, you know, I was contemplating retiring, right, because, um, you know, I just had a baby and I wanted to be there and going to Winnipeg would have took away from that. So I was speaking with one of the coaches and uh, he said, you know what, I didn't spend much time with my kids when they were young either, so you're not going to miss much. And that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't really like that. So. At that point, you know what I said, I, I don't want to be a part of a situation where a coach doesn't put family first. I've always been in that environment, starting with Ken Austin and then moving on to Ken Miller and even Coach Chamberlain. You know, they all preach family. And, uh, you know, when I felt like my family wasn't being put first, uh, you know, I got a little bitter about that and, you know, decided to just hang it up. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. In terms of, you know, not playing for the Blue Bombers, did you ever have the itch after that to play again, or had you made peace that those days were behind Well, actually, you? I don't know if you remember, but Matt Nichols was injured uh, during training camp when I initially retired. And so I, got, I fielded a few phone calls from my agent, you know, asking if I wanted to double back and, and go back and play. But at that point, I had made up my mind that I'm pretty much done. Is that something that was easy for you? Because you talk to different athletes about it at the end of their career, and some of them struggle with it. Yeah, it, it's never easy to hang up the cleats. You know, this is a sport and, uh, you know, something that I've been doing pretty much my entire life. So uh, it's very hard to, to hang it up. But playing in one place like Saskatchewan for so long and then having a bad experience in Montreal, I didn't want to repeat that in Winnipeg. So. I realized that it was time for me to hang it up. We're going to have you in the booth doing color with Luke Mulder, your good buddy. Dave Thomas will be on play-by-play. -play. I assume you're prepped up. I know you are from some of the talkings we've had behind the scenes about podcasts. So how do you feel about stepping into that new venture? I'm excited. I, I think that I can bring a lot of knowledge to the booth. Um, I like to look at myself as a guy who really understands what, a defense is trying to do as well as an offense. So if I can kind of give some preliminary things about what I see and try to predict some things, uh, you know, a la Tony Romo. Okay. I, I don't want to be Tony Romo, but <laughs> I want to just, you know, be able to showcase my football knowledge. So I'm excited about that. Is this something that you're passionate about to the point that you want to try it out, see if you enjoy it, and perhaps pursue it further? Definitely. I, I think that uh, right now I'm open to – any and all avenues. Um, I think this will be an excellent opportunity to kind of test my skills a little bit and see if I am on the right path. So I'm looking forward to that. You've been keeping up with the CFL, and I know this because of some of our discussions behind the scenes about you know what's going on, game planning, the things that you see. So from an analytical perspective, can you break down this matchup between Winnipeg and Saskatchewan based on what you've seen from both teams through 11 games? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, um, you know, at this point in the season, both teams are pretty much even. I think Winnipeg has weathered the toughest part of the season for them. They've shown the resilience that they have and the veteran squad that they are by being able to overcome uh, such a poor start. And uh, for Saskatchewan, to st the complete opposite, you know, starting off so hot and now going through a slump here, this is really the clash to see which team can kind of continue to go in the right direction or continue to go in the wrong direction. So uh, I think it's going to be a great game. Usually on Labor Day, it comes down to special teams. There's always a huge punt return or special teams play that could uh, decide the game. So I think this year will be no different. So, Doubles, I'm curious, what do you think about this current receiving core? What, what could you do with these guys lining up outside with the Riders right now? You know, I, I like this receiving core. You know, I think when you when you add a guy like a Joe, a Joe because I think the Riders receiving core was missing some physicality uh, when the season started. So, for him to get into the mix uh, and, and being able to add him to the speed of Bain and Amulus and you're, you're more finesse guys, and you can't forget about Schaefer Baker, who can do a little bit of everything. Uh, I, I like the mix of this group, but I also would like to see a Joe Ojo get more touches. He's a guy that I think can get better as the game goes on. You want to feed him the rock, get him seven to ten touches a game, and I, I think you can get the best out of him that way. All right.
You played with a lot of rookie receivers. You mentioned a Joe, a Joe. Do you think that the Riders are trying to bring him along slowly? Because it seems like from an upside perspective, he might have the highest upside of any current Riders receiver, but he's had a hard time getting a lot of the target share. Yeah, I wouldn't call it, uh, you know, bringing him along slowly. I just think that when you're a rookie, you don't get those reps with the starters in training camp, and I think he and Trevor are kind of building chemistry. And, and Trevor was hurt initially when Joe got his first snap. So uh, I think there's a chemistry that has to be built there between those two. And I think they've been working hard on that in practice. And, uh, you know, I think it'll show sooner or later, but it just takes reps to develop that chemistry. And that's something that they've been lacking because of injury. You mentioned Trevor Harris there. He's come back from not one, but two major injuries late in his career. He's coming up on 40 years old. You know what it's like to come back from major injuries. What have you seen from him since he's come back off the six-game injured list? Well, I was excited. You know, the very first game he came back, he was super efficient, 31 for 39. He was the typical Trevor Harris, the high percentage, not making any mistakes. And then last week in Toronto, you know, I felt like I saw a different guy. I'm not sure if he was rusty or not really seeing the defense. So um, I'm anxious to see him today to see uh, if he can build off what he did two weeks ago and forget about the mistakes that he made last week. What's it like for a veteran quarterback after your body has taken a toll through the years? You know, lots of big shots. Sometimes you guys get exposed to get ready for a game week in and week out when I'll say it, I guess, nicely. You're on the back nine of your career. Absolutely. It gets harder each and every week, each and every day that goes by. You're not getting any younger. It takes the body longer to recover from a lot of these shots that you take. And uh, and these opposing teams know that, you know, sometimes, um, you know, Trevor can get up a little bit slowly if he takes a big hit and, and they're going to try to take advantage of that. So um, I think if, if uh, you know, he can get rid of the ball quickly, try to take some of that pressure off himself, make the D-line, you know, have to pursue the ball, make sure their pass rush isn't at full speed. Uh, he doesn't have to take these hits, and, um, you know, he can stay up right all game. On the other side, the Riders' defense has been taking away the football at the highest rate of any D throughout the CFL this season. Zach Kolaris has still more interceptions than touchdowns. Much different Kolaris than a year ago when he looked like he was going to win a third straight MOP. He got my vote, but we'll move on from that. What have you seen from Kolaris this season that's markedly different from him a year ago? Well, I think the main thing is his receiving core is different. Uh, you know, whether it be by injury, you saw Rasheed Bailey go to Toronto. Uh, Kenny Lawler. Out for the year. Yeah, Sean's out, and uh, Kenny Lawler is just coming back this year. So um, I think what you saw with Zach in the previous three years is just consistency. Uh, he had the exact same receivers every single game. And when you have that, it's so easy to go out there. You know where each guy is going to be. They're in their spots, and they have this chemistry down pat but this year due to injury um, you know and he hasn't been playing his best football uh, I must say that but um, you know with him throwing three picks last week I don't think you'll see that again I thought I think you've seen the worst game that Zach Kolaris will play I think that's that was last week and uh, you know he's a, a veteran he's a smart guy and um, you know he won't make those same mistakes you got a game to prep for, so I'll get you out on this. What was your favorite Labor Day Classic play, and do you remember the play call? Oh, wow. I, I think, um, I can't remember the year, but it was a quarterback draw, kind of similar to a play 07. that you and Kerry had in yeah, 07, yeah. where the running back flares out if the linebacker uh, displaces from the box. Now it's a wide open quarterback draw, and uh, I had one for about 40 yards. And I, I was over 30 at the time, so I was kind of questioning my wheels. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I still could run them, you know, and, and still could, you know, pick them up and put them down at a good pace. So I surprised myself. And uh, Labor Day brings out that adrenaline in you. It doesn't matter your age. And uh, right. guys are always ready to play in this atmosphere. I know the hammies was tight that oh, night. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what year that was? I don't. I don't, man. I've, I've had – it just seems like a blur, you know. Uh, I've, I've played in so many games, and then, you know, the trials and tribulations at the end of my career, it, it kind of make you know, it all seems to run together, and I forgot about some of the good moments. But, uh, you know, 
Labor Day is always special. I think more than anything, you'll never forget the atmosphere. And even with the Blue Bomber fans coming over and filling up the old Taylor Field, uh, you got to love that environment.